all at one time. Wilson. What? I gotta practice. Um, you have one fencing lesson. Exactly why I can't stop now. Even for a story? Oh. Right. Ugh. Hey there, I'm Lawson, foremost fencing expert to be and bringer of fantastic stories. Like the one I've got today from my aunt's new neighbor, Aria. Aria and her family just moved to a new town and nothing feels normal yet. Aria's like, I miss our old house. And Isaiah says, I miss my tree house. And at the very same time, they say, I'm bored. And dad reminds them, you know, kids, only the Arya and Isaiah know exactly how this one goes. Only boring people are bored. Because they've heard it so many times, they could say it in their sleep. Only boring people are bored. So Arya looks around for ideas and she spots the giant stack of moving boxes. And she announces, Isaiah, I'm going to make you a castle. And Isaiah shouts, huzzah. Now Arya plans to get started on the castle after lunch, but there's so many boxes, she's not sure where to start. And by that evening, the stack seems bigger. And by the next morning, it's the Mount Everest of boxes! By then, Isaiah demands, where's my castle? Because he's got a dragon to fight. So, Arya finds her dad, and she says, where do I start? And dad's like, well, make a plan. So, Arya thinks hard and writes down the steps. Number one, create a blueprint. Number two, collect supplies. She needs scissors, glue, colored tape, marker, goblet, giant turkey leg, elf ears, and of course, cardboard boxes. And now it's on to number three, construct. And at last, the castle is finished. And they all shout, huzzah! So kids, Remember, there's more than one way to recycle your cardboard. And also, that commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. On God! Where's a dragon when you need one? I should find it. See you guys next time! For me you're good You hold my future You're working all the time You're the mountain mover From sunrise to sunset Till the sun comes back up again You're by my side You started a good work in me I know that you will complete it You will see
future You are the mountain mover You are faithful You are my hope You are my future You are the mountain mover You are faithful You started a good work in me I know that you will complete it You will see it through
I'm Erica. I've been training for a 5K race that's coming up in a few weeks, and I've had such a good time, I thought I'd organize another race for next month right here in my hometown. I've never organized a race before, so it's going to take some commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. And the first step of my plan is asking the mayor for permission to have the race. I was going to call her on the phone, but I got nervous. How does one talk to a mayor? So I've decided to make a more formal request through email. Mrs. Mayor. Or do I, do I say, or do I say Madam Mayor? What, no, dear Madam Mayor. No, I know. Dear most honorable Madam of Mayordom. What if I offend her? What if I get it wrong? I don't want to mess it up. I know what I need. A thesaurus. This will help me find bigger and more important sounding words to use so I won't make a fool of myself. Okay, ready? My name is Erica, okay? And I think, think, think. What's a better word for think? Mm -hmm. Ooh, surmise. I surmise that our town would be a congenial place. Place, 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 Ooh. vicinity to hold a 5K race. Race, 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 race. A 5K sprinting engagement. Okay, let me read that back. Dear most honorable, Madam of Mayordom, I surmise that our town would be a congenial vicinity to have a 5K sprinting engagement. What in the world am I even saying? Can't I just say that I think having a race in our town would be fun for everyone? Oh, no, the mayor's too important. I mean, you have to have the right words when talking to someone important. I'll keep thinking. In today's story, we'll hear about some of Jesus' friends who also weren't sure what to say to someone important. They needed a little. Prudent assistance. Help, they needed help. I'll keep looking. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses one through four. You know, there are a lot of things that we just don't know about Jesus. What was his favorite food? What kind of games did he like to play when he was growing up? How many brothers and sisters did he have? But there's one thing we do know. Jesus loved to talk to his father, God. In fact, Jesus made a habit of prayer. He would even slip away early to spend time in the quiet with God before the crowd showed up. His closest friends, the disciples, saw how important prayer was to Jesus. But they had some of the same questions you might have. When should I pray? Oh, what kind of words should I use? How do I talk to someone I can't see with my eyes? One day, Jesus took time alone to pray, as usual, and when he was finished, one of his friends got up the courage to ask, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, Jesus didn't get frustrated with his friends for not understanding how to pray, and he didn't give them this long list of complicated words. When thou prayest, thou must speaketh thusly. And Jesus didn't tell them to set aside five hours every day to pray. Begin praying promptly at 641, then go till 1107 with exactly one break at 922 AM for a sip of water. Instead, Jesus gave his friends a simple example. When you pray, this is what you should say. Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone who sins against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. 
Well, okay, that's great. It's simple. It's direct. So does that mean we just memorize that prayer and say it over and over to God? Well, actually, it is a great idea to memorize that prayer, but God likes it when we get creative, when we take the ideas from that prayer and make them our own. Let's take a look. Father, may your name be honored. Because of Jesus, we can all call God Father. He's like the best parent ever, a perfect one, and there is no one else in the whole world like God. May your kingdom come. A prayer is not making God do something for us. God is a king. He made everything and everyone, and his kingdom comes when we show our love to him by giving his love to those around us. Give us each day our daily bread. Okay, let's see. We got white bread, rye, uh, the weird nutty kind, gluten-free, Kaiser roll, tortilla. Actually, this part of the prayer isn't just about bread or really not just about food. It's about humbly asking God for everything we need every single day, including food, clothes, shelter, connection with other people, kindness, patience, and grace, the things we need in fresh supply every single morning. Forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone who sins against us. There is not a single day that we do not mess up in some way. You snap at your little brother. You laugh along when other kids are making fun of the new girl. You sneak an extra cookie without asking. Jesus said it's important to start fresh each day, to ask for forgiveness and freely offer forgiveness to others who have hurt you too. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. Jesus knew that every day you would face tough situations that would threaten to trip you up. Times that you would maybe be tempted to not act in a way that showed love to others. And in those moments, you can use God's strength as a, as a lifeline to carry you through. Okay, there is a lot packed into that one simple prayer. But if you found a quiet place and put it into your own words, it might sound a bit like this. Dear Father, there is no one like you. Please help all of us to show your love to each other. Give us everything that we need to get through today. Please erase all the wrong things I've done and help me not to hold on to the wrong things others have done to me. Give me your strength to keep from doing anything that hurts you or anyone else today. In your name, amen. You can use these ideas from Jesus' prayer to talk to God anytime, anywhere. Whether it's 20 seconds or 20 minutes, it fills God's heart with joy when you choose to connect with Him. Prayer is so important. It's the way we stay connected to God. It's how we get up close and personal with Him. And we never have to wonder whether we're using the perfect words with God because Jesus gave us an amazing example. We can use these exact words when we pray to God. Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. But we can also mix it up and talk to God in our own words. Dear God, you are so amazing. I love how you made the stars and fingerprints are so cool. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. You can tell him how you feel, what you're thankful for, what you're mad about, what you wish you could change. And if you really don't know what to say, well, you can tell him that too. All that truly matters is that you do pray to God, that you connect with him every day if you can. That's the one thing to remember. Practice praying to God. And the more you pray, the easier it becomes. Maybe it does take special words to talk to a mayor. I don't really know. But I do know that with God, you can just be yourself. So, God, I am so scared to talk to the mayor. Please help me have courage. Thanks. Amen. Okay. Dear Mayor, my name is Erica, and I would like to organize a 5K for our town. Would that be all right? Who needs a thesaurus? See you next time. <laughs> Actually, I really liked this. Hold on one second. What's another word for fun?